एस चांद प्रेजेंस एजुकेशनल वीडियो लेक्चर्स एज पर दी ए आई सी टी ई कारिकुलम डिफिकल्ट कॉन्सेप्ट मेड इजी स्टडी एनी वेयर एनी टाइम In the part one of the lecture stereochemistry, we talked about chirality, optical activity, a chirality, superimposable and non-superimposable images, and structural isomers. So basically, we had a broad view about isomers and stereoisomers. Hi, I am Dr. Manika. For more information on such topics such as stereochemistry, reaction mechanisms. you can follow our book by s chand publishing the link to which is given in the description box below so with this introduction we can move to the part 2 of the lecture where we will be looking at configurational isomers into more depth focusing on enantiomers diastereomers and optical activity so on the screen you can see a pair of molecule so this pair of the molecules are basically enantiomers of glyceraldehyde So, what are enantiomers? Enantiomers are non-superimposable mirror images of a particular molecule which has a chiral center. Now, these two forms of the molecule are non-superimposable and they will be optically active. That is, when passed through a polarimeter, they will rotate the path of the plane polarized light to either direction. That is, either right or either left. now to how much degree they will rotate depends upon the concentration of the solution or length of the polarimeter tube so this pair of the glyceraldehyde is shown as carbon at the center cho at the top and ch2oh at the bottom h and oh on the uh, on the horizontal line so basically this is a representation which we call as fischer projection so fischer projections are basically a way of representing 3d molecules in the plane of the paper where the groups which are in the horizontal line are the ones which are in the plane of the paper the one which is down the line is uh, inside the plane of the paper and the one which is at the top is outside the plane of the paper so we have also we have discussed in detail about the fischer projections of carbohydrates in another lecture by s chand academy for which you can follow our channel and look for more depth so in the beginning i asked you a question about uh, how many chiral centers in penicillin which is a broad spectrum antibiotic so now since we know how we define chiral molecules or what is chirality we can easily say that yes penicillin is optically active because it has few sets of chiral atoms now I'll try to locate them out the first one is obviously the one which is present over here the second one could be this one and the third one is this one so penicillin has three optically active carbon centers and three we can say chiral centers you cannot call this carbon as chiral because it has two similar groups attached to it before moving further i was just say that to find out how many stereo isomers a molecule will represent depends upon a formula which is given by 2 to the power n where n is the number of the chiral center so for example if the molecule has three chiral centers the number of stereo isomers it can show is 2 to the power of 3 so this is an easy way of finding out how many stereo isomers it can represent and it will be easier to draw them out so as we discussed in the first slide the classification of isomers i told you that optical isomers are classified into two forms enantiomers and diastereomers now we have seen that the two forms of the molecules which are non superimposable mirror images of each other are enantiomers but what about the stereo isomers which are not the mirror images of each other i'm not saying that they are superimposable mirror images of each other i'm saying that they are not the mirror images of each other focus on the word not over here so such stereo isomers are known as diastereomers and obviously diastereomers are also different molecules they will not rotate the optically active light 
towards the either side of the plane of the polarization because they are not related to each other by the mirror images. So chemically or physically, if we compare enantiomers and diastereomers, we will look into detail about enantiomers and diastereomers structurally through the progressing slides also. But for now, enantiomers are the ones which have identical physical properties because they have similar molecular formula, similar structural formula, even they are oriented in the space in a different manner. So that is the reason why we have difference in their properties which deal with the polarization. So enantiomers have identical physical properties such as melting point, boiling point, density, etc. However, they do differ in the way they interact with the polarized light and how they interact with the other optically reactive, reactive reagents. Diastereomers, however, are not related as an object and their mirror image and hence they are different molecules. So obviously they will have different physical properties and different chemical properties also. Now look at a pair of enantiomers. This is a molecule of tartaric acid which can be represented in three different forms. So here you can see that you have two chiral centers C1 and C2. So 2 to the power 2, how many stereoisomers could be possible? 4. So these are the two which are present over here and the other one could be the mirror image of this structure. But we have not drawn the mirror image of this structure. Why? Because this molecule seems to have a plane of symmetry. And what we discussed in the part 1 was that if the molecule has a plane of symmetry, it will form a mirror image which will be superimposable. And if the mirror image is superimposable, then the molecule are, cannot exist in the two different forms. It is just one molecule. Okay. So look at the enantiomeric forms of the tartaric acid first. So here there are two chiral centers. We, both of them are represented in the Fisher projection. The other one can be drawn by placing a mirror in the front of the first one. And both these mirror images are non-superimposable. Right. So these two rotate the plane of the polarized light toward either of the direction, but by an equal amount. That is the property of an enantiomer that will they will rotate the path of the plane polarized light by the similar amount, but in opposite direction, which can be calculated by using the uh, specific rotation. Right. On the other hand, this form of the tartaric acid where both the hydroxyl group are on the right side of the molecule, right side of the molecule, it has a plane of symmetry. So even though it bears two chiral centers, this will be optically inactive. Why active? Because it forms a superimposable mirror image because it has a plane of symmetry. Such compounds which have more than one stereo center and even then they are optically inactive are known as meso compound. So this is a kind of intrinsic compensation of the molecule, okay, which forces it or which renders it optical inactivity. Another example to explain diastereomers of this asymmetric molecule, here again we have two chiral centers and again four stereoisomers are possible. But here we can see if we mark them as A, B, C, D, all four of them are represented in the Fisher projection. So you can see that both A and B are mirror images of each other and they are non-superimposable. So A and B are pair of So A and B are pair of enantiomers. Similarly, C and D are also a pair of enantiomers. However, A and C and B and D are examples of 
diastereomers. Why we are calling B and D as pair of diastereomers? Because they are not the mirror images of each other, right? We are not talking about superimposable or not superimposable over here because they are not even the mirror images of each other. But yes, they are different molecules. They have different connectivity of the atoms in the space. And that is why we call them as diastereomer. So if you put a mixture of B and D in the polarimeter, it will not show any sort of optically activity, but individually, yes, they will be optically active. So diastereomers can also be uh, encountered in natural chemistry, such as in the carbohydrates. Uh, for example, if you draw the Fisher projections of a uh, few aldohexoses like galactose, glucose and mannose, you can see that galactose and glucose, glucose and mannose, even allose and aldose, all of them are pair of diastereomers because they are not the mirror images of each other. However, allose and aldose, glucose and mannose, they could be represented as pair of epimers, a classification which we discussed in the chapter of carbohydrates. So these Fisher projections of carbohydrates can be called as diastereomers because they form, if you place a mirror, they are not related to each other as their mirror images. So to summarize, enantiomers are the one which rotate the plane polarized light by the same degree but in the opposite direction and the direction is measured by the polarimeter with the help of its specific rotation where t is the temperature at which we record the specific rotation where t is the temperature at which we record the specific rotation alpha is the observed rotation l is the length of the polarimeter tube in decimeter c is the concentration of the solution so the enantiomer which will rotate the path of the plane polarized light towards the right is known as the d isomer or dextrorotatory while the other one which rotates it to the left hand side is known as the l isomer or levorotatory so this is a property of enantiomers so to define the configuration of the stereoisomers, it can be done in two possible ways. One is their absolute configuration, another one is their relative configuration. Absolute configuration is given by a very uh, conventional uh, system uh, given by CAN in gold and prelog, which is also known as which is also known as CIP rules. Okay, so. According to the CIP rules, the atoms are defined a priority order and then they are arranged according to them and numbering them gives us an idea about their configuration. For example, you can look a few molecules over here. Okay, So in this molecule, you have to move the group of least priority away from you. So hydrogen has been moved away from the viewer's eye and then when we assign the priority order, the first number is given to the atoms with the highest atomic number. The second rule says that if the atoms connected to the carbon are similar, we move to the atom with the second, the, the atom connected next to it. And the third rule says that if you have a multiple bond, then it could be treated as the atom connected twice or thrice if it is a triple bond. So here you can see that since Br has the highest atomic number, this gets the first second and oxygen gets the third. So this arrow direction you can see it is in the anti-clockwise. So anti-clockwise is S. So the configuration of this chiral center is S. So R and S, S stands for sinister. This is nothing to remember. It's just to make it more clear. And R is for rectus, R. See, this R and S configuration is entirely different from the optical activity notation small d and small l that is dextrorotatory or levorotatory. The similar uh, process can be extended to the other molecule to know their absolute configurations. Okay. The other way of defining the configuration of chiral centers is relative configuration which we have already discussed in the chapter of carbohydrate. You can see it for more details where we assign the configuration of the chiral carbon with respect to a group which is attached next to it. So 
so if the hydroxyl group which was attached to the carbon which is next to the hydroxy methyl group was on the right hand side we assign those sugars as the d isomers but if the hydroxy group was on the left hand side of the fischer projection we assign those isomers as l isomers so since the configuration was defined with respect to some other atom this was known as a relative configuration now the second part of the optical isomers are geometrical isomers which are possible through restricted rotation around a carbon carbon bond okay since the rotation is restricted we can have the possibility of cis and trans dependent upon the bases of the groups which are present on the either side of the double bond so here you can see in the two molecule of the butene the two ch3 group are on the same side of the double bond so this is a cis isomer and here they are on the opposite side of the double bond so this is a trans isomer so this is a very easy distinction between the cis and the trans isomers and since you can see that cis and trans are not mirror images of each other we can call them as diastereomers the other way of defining the geometrical isomers is by ez system so the e and the z isomer can be classified on the basis of the atoms or the groups connected to both the carbon atoms which are connected through the double bond on the basis of their priority so if you look at the two carbon atoms which are connected by the olefinic bond and assign the priority orders to the groups attached so this side of the double bond has ch3 as the higher priority group and this side of the double bond has this one as the higher priority group so since the higher priority group are on the opposite side this one is known as e isomer and here the higher priority groups are on the same side of the double bond they will be classified as the z isomer these are just the two ways of expressing how we can uh, classify geometrical isomers so with this we are to an end of the lecture of stereochemistry part 2 and uh, we have talked about classification of isomers types of structural isomerism and uh, chirality and achirality optical isomers how we distinguish between enantiomers and diastereomers and the way of assigning the configuration to the chiral carbon atom through relative and absolute configuration method and a brief description about the geometrical isomers for more information on such topics such as stereochemistry reaction mechanisms you can follow our book by s chand publishing the link to which is given in the description box below please keep liking subscribing and sharing our channel for more such videos thank you all rights reserved this video has been prepared for educational purposes only no part of it may be reproduced or copied without the permission of the copyright holder